Hello, YouTube. It's Finnit here, and welcome to another weekly rant video. Today, I'm again joined by the Chiu Dude and Baseball Lover. How are you guys doing? Hi. Wait, right. that was really good, guys. So, the Chiu Dude is making a kind of a permanent appearance on the show, and you guys seem to be liking him, so please keep on enjoying him because we enjoy him. But let's start this off. <laughs> Yay, the first topic. Go of this video is going to be Tootie Lane Carry. There's been three races or three stages written so far, and they have all been flat stages, which is basically, it's like 10 stages long, and all of them are flat except for one stage. But the very first stage was won by a breakaway, Dubor Quintaro. How do you much, how, how do you, what, like, do you know anything about this guy? Like, I've never heard of him before. before no, I've never heard of him. You know, it's weird. Exactly. He rides for Team Columbia and he won a breakaway, and there's like, since Eurosport only shows 15 minutes of uh, actual footage of the stage, you know nothing about how he won. He just yeah. went in the breakaway, attacked, won. Done. It's a 15 minute video, it's kind of dumb. So, there's really nothing to discuss out there. It's just basically a statement that he won it, and we don't know how, we don't know who he is. We just know that Duba Quintero has the leader's jersey. The next mm -hmm. stage was a very controversial stage, though, because there was a big crash yeah. in the final kilometers where Theo Boss pulled through, but with, like, 1.5 kilometers to go, there was a big, big crash, and it seemed like only, like, 10 or 20 guys got through that crash, and 180 and then, guys got caught behind. And then there was another... <laughs> yeah, like, it kept crashing. There might have been oil or something on the road. I mean, there's... That was a really weird stage. What do you... What do you... Yeah. What do you guys' opinion on that? Crash in the final two kilometers. Like... Uh, well... It's kind of weird, like, it became more of a last man standing race, really, than actual sprint, and, uh, it's, it's part and parcel of cycling where it's just one person falls, you just see a whole, like, montage of everyone else is falling, but, uh, Feo Boss didn't even need to sprint at the end to win, which was, Balkan got one and two, which was pretty easy, they barely even did anything, pretty much, and, uh, pretty much just sit at the front and avoid crashes, I see. <laughs> what it looked like, it's like two of a nine last year. Well, they won every single stage, if any of you remember that. That was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty ridiculous. I think that I think that Theo Boss was very selfish for not giving Graham Brown the victory. I uh, should personally. have given him the victory. I guess so, yeah. but a victory is a victory, and they got it. But the guy that crashed was Andre Guadini, and this guy was, like, set to win every single stage of this race. Cause and that, oh my god, all that picture. Yeah, oh. he's got, like, the record of the most stage wins in this uh, stage race. And somehow he got like a hole in his foot, and it looked really disgusting. Uh, it happened in the crash, I think. Yeah, I don't know what happened. But the very next stage, he actually came back from the dead, and he managed to win the stage. So I've got max, max respect for that, because that is insane. With that injury and then managing to win the stage, pretty important. What do you guys think about Andrew Gardini being able to pull through? Or do you guys think they actually let him get the victory in that stage? We haven't seen the footage no. yet, though, so... No. It could, it could actually happen. Yeah, I, I don't think so, mainly because in order for that to happen, every team would have to be on board. And if there weren't teams on board, then they would have a distinct advantage because they would <laughs> all be against him. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I think that it's pretty... um. So you just think he's that good? He was able to uh, yeah. I recover think he it? was the best player in the race before. And, I don't know, maybe they what? put a cotton ball in the hole and mm. taped it. <laughs> now it's fine. Is, the thing is, like, nowadays, they got so many drugs and painkillers and all that shit where you, you're not going to even feel your legs afterwards if you have an injury like that, I guess. And all these injections, whatever, painkillers, you'll be yeah. fine the next day. <laughs> Pretty disgusting, though. To be honest, I would never be able to do that, even with painkillers and stuff like that. Having to ride another 166 kilometers and then sprint in the finish. You yeah. won't be able to feel your feet though. <laughs> that's, that's the entire point though, because how do you know how to like ride them? So you just automatic, like a robot move, you just know how to do it? Like, you can't feel your legs. You use your legs. <clears throat> yeah, but you don't know. And you hope can't. that your feet are doing the right thing. That's, that's so <laughs> weird though. But I guess that's with all the, all the science and technology we have today, I guess we're able to do that. Very interesting though. I've it's got just a racing for, for you. Exactly, but on to some of the more interesting topics of this week, because there wasn't, regarding races, there's like no news whatsoever, because there was a very, very quiet week compared to last week, but there are some, some small little fun articles to talk about. First of all, a guy named Bruin, 
uh, late, what was that, late October, he got caught for doping in, in, in Tour of Asia or something like that, and he got mm -hmm. caught for the clenbuterol, the drug that we've been talking about before, which is in meat in Asia, and he tried to commit suicide when he first got the news that he was tested positive, because he's one of those guys who doesn't believe in doping, so he would never doped, but luckily for him, luckily for us, it failed. But now his B sample is also confirmed positive, so he's gonna get a ban from this. Do you guys think that's okay when he's tried to commit suicide, that he's now also gonna get a ban from this? You can start your dude. Well, I don't... Uh, I don't know. It, it could be all, like, drama and stuff he wants to build up against himself and, like... Because we, we all know how Lance Armstrong was like, No, oh, I never doped in my life, never even touched it. And this could be like a similar thing where you just try to clear your name and you know create a so some sort of excuse, I guess. Um, Very extreme, but, though. Yeah, but uh, you gotta go extreme these days. Simply, you know how difficult it is to get away because, and also like how, you know, like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just drugs. Yeah. Yeah. And build a roll. But should he be banned? Should he be banned from cycling, or should he like should they take a look into this? They know that this 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 exact doping ingredient is in beef and stuff and meat in China and Asia. Should they ban him from being tested positive for clenbuterol? Or should they not? Ban him. Okay, what do you because, say? Yeah. Because uh, wait, because uh, there's so many Chinese riders in the Valendrome and all these other athletes, they don't get caught from clenbuterol, do they? I don't it's think not so. like they're veg vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, you would think that every single Chinese rider would then be caught with clenbuterol because they're eating their food all the time. Well, they only eat rice, though. Like <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> my my point is is that I kind of I I have to agree here with the chew dude. You know, he could just be victimizing himself for all we know. We can't prove that, but what we can prove is that he did have a positive test, and so. Maybe he should have been wary of these things, and maybe he wasn't. But the deal is, is that you can't just make an exception to doping because of what could have happened or what, you know, he might have done. You know, uh, sure, it's it's sad, but that's just the way it is. You can't just not take a positive test into effect because you didn't choose to put that one in effect. That's not how it works. One thing I want to say though, if he gets banned from cycling, I'm almost 100% positive that he's going to try to commit suicide once again. That's a sad thing to say. Well, but if I've he never even heard of him. He's not like he's going to win anything anyway. Still a human. Still a human that commits suicide. <laughs> no, no, I mean. no, but I mean like in cycling, like maybe he should just get an office job. <laughs> I guess that's one way of looking at it, but I mean if he survives, we'll see. I'm uh, sorry to hear you. He, he survives, oh my god. <laughs> That's what it is. Like, he it's tried so to commit suicide when he got tested positive for the first time. If he gets banned now, that's his entire life. Like, his dream is to become a professional cyclist, and he's semi pro. Very true. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a touchy topic, because as yeah. you're saying, he might, be, he might be staging it, but do you really have the balls to be that extreme to actually try and fake taking your own life? Well, if he, if, if, you know, I mean, I've heard of people doing it, and even if he wasn't, that's still, you can't just let the positive chest, let doping go on because he did that. That's an, that's, you're victimizing yourself, and that's, that's, you're putting the, you're putting the race organizers in a position where they don't, where they can't ban you with their morals kept. So, so I think that that's definitely that's definitely putting them in a bad position, and and I don't think that's fair at all either. So you're saying that if Chris Horner would try to commit suicide, he would still be banned if he got yes, caught for doping. Yes, of course. Duh. <laughs> just making sure that it's not like yeah, none like you're like he's Belgian. I never heard of him. Nah, just ban him. No, it, I mean we've all heard of Chris Horner. Mm -hmm. it's just, just and, make sure uh, that's not we'll like one side, like the nationalism inside you talking. So, what you want to yeah. have a final touch on this, Q dude, before moving on to the next yeah. topic? I mean, what? Well, just because uh, everyone wants to commit suicide now, can they get away with all their um, past bad sort of things? I, I don't think so. I mean, it is what it is, and just because you're willing to commit suicide doesn't mean your ban goes away. <laughs> you know, I yeah. don't know. It's you okay. know what? I'll do it. I'll commit suicide if I, if I, if I. 
am not put on the top of Pro Cycling Manager rankings today. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we touched this one enough. What do you guys think? If you have an opinion on this, put your comment in the comment section below, and we'll read it. So, on to the next topic. So, so as some of you might know, today's race is Omelet Head... Or, yesterday's stage is Omloop Head Newsblad. And uh, BMC lost quite an, a valuable asset, because Quinsato was out... Uh, he was out checking the route, and he got hit by a wheelchair. Don't ask me how that happened, but somehow a wheelchair hit his ankle, and he somehow fractured it. So they had to call in Rick Sable a day before the race to take his place. And wow. now Hutchoff's out too. <laughs> yeah, he, he just crashed. We, we just heard so, that. But what do you guys so think about this? Yeah, like, this is not the first screwed. time we hear about stupid stuff like this. Because also in the Tour of Oman, Match Bushel on the way down from a mountain got hit by a madras. Do you guys think there should be some sort of like safety measures to not get hit by stupid things? You can start this one off baseball over. Like, how would you prevent this? Uh, just don't go near stupid things. I mean, wheelchairs <laughs> can't go that fast, can they? How do you even get hit by a wheelchair? Did it like hunt you down? <laughs> he was not on his bike, he was just out walking. Lurking behind every corner. <laughs> wheelchairs. It's sabotage from another team, probably. <laughs> so we like, how... Is there anything you can do to stop getting hit by a mattress or getting hit by a wheelchair? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, do you have, do you know anything to do to, do this to stop that? <laughs> it's so oh, it funny. sounds like ridiculous. I mean, I don't know what you guys have there in Europe. Is there like flying mattresses and flying <laughs> wheelchairs going around? <laughs> I think oh, we have those here. You know, flying mattresses. It's, it's extreme. Like, I've never actually thought about someone getting injured because of mattress coming their Dude, way. Did you know that that's what happens when you rip the tag off? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, it's, it sounds so unrealistic that it actually happened. Like, I mean, it's like, there's, in my opinion, there's nothing you can do to stop these kind of stories. It's just wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong item, I guess. <laughs> it's so dumb. I'm sorry for Quinsato yeah. though, because it's kind of like this is the big opener for the season. You always want to do good in these kind of races, but uh -huh. you're taken out before you're even able to do anything. So it's a, it's a little fun story to tell you guys. But I guess there's no way you can prevent this. Next thing that we're gonna, able to talk about, which we're kind of happy to talk about, is the ASO has given out wildcards to Paris-Roubaix, Amstel Gold Race, liege piston liege and all those classics. Milan San Remo, I believe, as well. I believe it's Mount Quebec, I Am Cycling, Team Nera Majura, and some, some sort of French team or Belgian team. I'm not sure which, which one it is. Do you know Baseball Lover? What the last team was? Um, I guess it doesn't. Uh, I'm looking through the article. Oh, it's in the, it says in the, in the top of the article, but I guess it doesn't matter. Oh. Uh, so United what do you guys Healthcare. think of these guys? Yeah, United Healthcare. That's it. What do you guys yeah, think yeah. of these teams getting ASO wildcards? Can they do anything in these classics? You, no. Why not? Uh, maybe maybe I am cycling. And which ones? Well, I am. Th they are already in. Um, MTN, MTN, well, they have Cholik, who won Milan San Remo, but that's not really these kind of classics. Uh, He's not going to do it Col again. I do not see Seal, like, winning Milan San Remo once yeah, again. Yeah, Colombia, like, I guess they're kind of hilly classics, but they're more of, like, long mountain, you know, high altitude type guys. I'm not really sure if this fits them. Well, Net up, I lives. mean, they got a few good guys, but I still don't, I still don't see that as a reason to get this. Um, United Healthcare... I mean, they got, mm, they have Mascant, who was fourth in Roubaix, but that was a long time ago. So, I mean, I can kind of see that, but I still don't like that for Liège, like, man, I, I'm not really sure about this. When you said Team NetUp had no one, I want to hear your opinion on Leopold Koenig. Last year in the Vuelta Espana, he got second, or he actually won a stage, I believe. Yeah. It, and it was a hilly stage, don't you think he could uh, do that once again in the hilly classic? He can get top five, top six? No, I don't. And and the only reason I say that is I think he's a tremendous rider on a not-so-tremendous team. And what that does is, you know, in, in a stage, a hilly stage of a Grand Tour, you know, it kind of happens much faster. Mm -hmm. And he's the kind of guy that can that can just pop out there and take the win and have a great day when no one else does. But in a long, hilly classic, everyone's preparing for it. Ever, it's like there's a huge build up to this m one moment. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously he's a guy who could get a top ten, but uh, the rest of his team prevents me from knowing if. I think that he's really their only hope to get 
anything important done, and, and that's my issue. Like, one rider, it's like how I am got into the tour, and most people were saying that it was just because of Chavanel. Like, oh, it is. I, mm. I don't know. What do you think, you did? Well, for, what was it, um, when you get riders like Leopo Koenig, I don't think he would do well in these type of races. Simply, well, in the in the stage race, a long stage race, 21 days, you got riders not even caring about a hilly stage. They're just, you know, riding passively. You got sprinters, teams with sprinters who are just resting. Then you got your guys who, you know, your not so big teams actually going for it. And that's when riders like Koenig does win it. And then you compare that to a stage, uh, a single stage race, a classic where everyone's actually going for the win. Like literally everyone wants to win. And that's a totally different story um, in general. Uh, I don't think any of these teams to win. It's good that the ASO is giving um, teams a chance, I guess, uh, to build. Columbia, maybe they might have some random guys just come out of nowhere, like always. Well, they lost yeah. their big talents. Like, Atapuma has gone from there. Arredondo has gone from there. Yeah. So, I mean, they lost some of their big guys. All their big talents, they always lose them to the World Tour teams because they're so good. Exactly. But one thing I actually want to say, I'm kind of I'm kind of happy that ASO wins with some non-French teams with the wild cards. I mean, they could just yeah, be all true. French and just give uh, Britannia, uh, Coffee Deuce. They're, they're not teams. French races. I know, but still. If ASO is giving out the wild cards, they can do as they please. That's true. So, I mean, but it would kind of ruin the sport. It's like the shoot Italia without Italian teams. It's, it's how it works. I enjoy that. But my personal opinion on these teams, I can't wait to see Leopold Koenig. I mean, that guy is such an amazing guy. I honestly believe he can get top three. In a hilly classic. I know you guys don't agree with this, but he yeah. is such an independent rider that he can actually do it on his own. The way he won that one stage without, like, he just, he won it by himself. He just attacked in the bottom, went all the way up, and won the stage. I mean, it is in the Vuelta Espana, no one really cares, but it's still a victory. Count my book. Uh, any uh, finishing touches on that, the wild cards before we move on to the next topic? I, I want to say that, um... I just don't. I just don't see Kone going up against guys like, you know, Rodriguez, Gilbert, Martin, you know, those kind of guys. I, I, I just don't see it. Maybe a top ten, but I, th I don't think that he's gonna be getting a podium. He's beat Rodriguez before, Moreno before. Yeah, but not, not in this kind of buildup. That's not true. in this kind of race, where everyone's just gunning for this one stage. I mean, you got to think, in, in these kind of races, teams are bringing their hilly classic lineup. Teams are bringing those kind of lineups. When you go to a Grand Tour, teams are bringing a diverse lineup. Half of the guys in the peloton have no ambition at all for that day or have no ambition of helping anyone that day because they have no favorites on their team for that day. So in this kind of a race, with, this, with the field totally caring about this one race, I think that speaks more than... Of wealth stage. Sounds true. You have any finishing touches too, dude? No, I think that about sums it up, um, what baseball said. I think it's very true. Okay. I actually believe that, yeah. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is a topic close to mine, because again, the beloved team, Tinkoff Saxo Bank, as they're called now, Tinkoff came out with a really bold statement. He said that he's got a zero tolerance for doping, yet he believes that every single rider in the peloton is doped, and without doping, there would be no cycling. What do you guys think about this statement? Because it's really bold to make a statement like this when you're an owner of a team. You can start it off too, dude. Well, uh, we, we all know Olive Tinkov is a businessman, and that's why he has a zero tolerance. Because if any of these riders get caught for doping, that just pretty much ruins his whole franchise sort of thing. Um, any, anyone who thinks of Tinkov thinks about doping. That's, that's what uh, I think he's really meaning to say from there. Um, Saying that everyone's doping, yeah, he probably knows it more than we do because he's actually seeing the riders every day. So I can't really complain what he's saying, but he's known to making uh, bold statements, I <laughs> guess. So, yeah. But so, Basically. what do you think? Do you do you think that without doping, there'd be no cycling? Like the sport would be so boring. I want to hear your opinion on this. Like, so without doping in the sport, no one would have the energy to go up one one two fast enough to make it interesting. What do you think about this statement? Or this part of the statement? It could well be. Um, this, it's hard to say because we don't actually really know. But I guess doping does make the sport interesting if they're actually competing like this. And But there's a, 
if you if you make the race that hard, I've heard that it's even more it's more healthy to let them dope because they're just putting so much um, stress into the body and doping is the only way to I guess um, not relieve the stress I guess you can say and uh, that's what that's what, doping is not necessarily necessarily a bad thing if you think about it like that because the races are so hard these days. That's very true. I mean, yeah. What do you think, baseball lover, to all these statements? Um, I I don't think that he's correct when he says that doping makes cycling. You know, I think that in time, maybe we the the faster pace of the races, maybe that would hurt the sport if it got slower. But eventually, everyone would adjust, and everything gets onto another scale. And I think the race would be better without doping. Unfortunately, I just don't see this possible. I think he's. I don't think he's right when he says that every rider in the peloton's dope, but there's always going to be guys that are. Yeah, and it's going to be tough to spot who is and who's not. It's a sad thing. I mean, <laughs> I actually, I, I dislike Oleg Tinkov, but I like Oleg Tinkov because he says the things that nobody wants to hear and no one dares to say. I applaud him for that because somebody needs to say all this stuff. Like, if we don't say this stuff, if, it's just going to be the same old, same old. Like, I actually enjoy having some... Uh, some little controversy things in the peloton here and there. The cycling pro, the secret pro, what is he called? The guy who writes... Secret pro. Yeah, I like that guy because he's also saying some some stuff that's not always by but the we'll book. never know who he is. I think it's... <laughs> we need guys like this and all I think of brings that to the table and I enjoy that. But as it is, what he's saying about doping and no cycling, like no doping, no cycling, I agree, I think. I mean, most people hate Froome for what he does, but also... if. Froome has brought so much attention to the cycling because he is so like everyone knows Froome. When somebody says Tour de France, they say Froome. They say Armstrong. These guys have all dope. They've all won before. They've made the sport what it is. Except if you're actually a fan of cycling and you know they didn't make the sport. But from guys that are not following the sports as much as we do, they've made the sport what it is. So I can see it to an extent, but there's also kind of extreme thing the way he did. Yeah. So, uh, I guess that's it for that one. Tinkoff is very, he's a very exciting guy in my opinion. But the next topic that I'm really excited to talk about, because this is actually going to be a good one. Patrick Sinkovich just got an eight-year ban from using doping twice. Do you guys think that if you ever got caught doping, it should just be a permanent ban? Because history shows that if you got caught doping and you survive your two-year ban and you come back with a contract, you dope again. We've seen this with Daniel DeLuca and we said it re- we've seen it with Ricardo Rico and now again with Patrick Sinkovich. Do you think it should be a permanent ban? Well, I liked your um, little thing where if you survive the ban... It's going back to the guy. Well, it's not like if you survive it with health, but if you actually survive your career. That's what I mean. Like, it's it's difficult to actually keep your conti- career continuing. Like, you have to continue your career without really riding any races, and you have to still prove for a team that you're actually worth it. I mean, that's difficult. Yeah. What do you think, though? Man. Permanent band or uh, not? Oh, they got to clear it up. It's, it's really such a, like, a gray area. No one really knows what... It is really the banter, and when riders coming back again and doping, it kind of shows that a lot of the guys in the peloton are doping and they're taking their chances again because really there's no point riding if they're if they're not doping, I guess. Because um, if they're not doping, I, I don't see them coming back and being competitive without doping if they choose to dope again. Uh, if you guys get me, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. get you. Yeah. I get you. But the thing is, if you're saying that, so let's t- let's take a look at some of the guys who have been banned. Alberto Contador, he's been banned before. Do you think that he's doping now then? No. I think you can see that in his results. Not true, yeah. but you never know. Because it has been shown that guys who have been caught doping come back and dope again. And you just said mm-hmm. that they realize that they probably don't have a chance if they don't use dope. Yeah, maybe Contador hasn't realized that yet. This will be his year. <laughs> See, the funny thing is now, if Contador is like, if he if he starts doing good again, everyone's gonna be like, oh, he just found a dope again. So it's kind of it's a curse of the sport. If you do good, you get accused of being doper. It's kind of a curse. But uh, well, Chris Froome, so. <laughs> but can you see the pros and cons of b- banning a guy for like permanent? Like, he's already disgraced no. the sport. <laughs> No, 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 no. You know what? No, I I don't think that lifetime ban for one thing. But I think that you have to make 
something that's strict and you and in every case is the truth like a two year ban you know it can't just fluctuate it can't just be like you know you get 6 months you get whatever that's how there has doing to be it like now. everybody For gets sure. two years and if you do it again it's lifetime probably i like that yeah i like that as well but i mean i can see i can see the benefits of doing a lifetime the first time just to be like we don't accept doping no matter who you are no matter how big you are we just do not accept doping in the sport. You're out for life. You're probably just gonna come back and dope again. I can see, like I'm or, myself. I'm actually kind of for that though. At least or keep if it you consistent. like do it again, if you do it again, it like um, like they'll take away all your results since the first time. What about a to, prison sentence? With a lifetime. That, it's not against the law unless it's like an illegal drug. So. Could they make it though? No, <laughs> just uh, interesting. Just, so. just. A I little. can't change the law, but if if it's an illegal drug, like um, when Bonin was uh, snorting coke, you know, that happens. Should have gone to jail. A lot. Pantani as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't he die from overdose? Overdoses? Yeah, he yep. did. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's one way of saying it. So yeah. Uh, I mean, please come. Hmm? Go. Uh, there's a documentary coming back, uh, coming of him about his drug abuse, which is interesting. I might watch that. Okay, yeah. so this is very interesting. I just want to prove, point out that I won this stage pretty, pretty. I even, how did I win this stage with Gripe when I went for Rolands? What? So, uh, you guys are already finished. Yeah, we just finished right now. Wow. So, I guess that's it for this week. Uh, there's been there was kind of. It was light on the news side. There's not much to discuss, but I think what we discussed was pretty well discussed. So if you enjoy hearing the Chew Dude and hearing the baseball lover discuss, the, the baseball lover discuss with me, <laughs> please go and check out their channels. They need some love. They need the publicity. I mean, I'm not always going to be here. I'm getting older. And when I'm going to be gone, these are the guys who are going to take over. Yeah, for I mean, guys. you're hitting the retirement age here. Oh, failure. shut up. I'm, I'm almost 20, two years away. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any closing arguments you want to say, say it now. Otherwise, it's yeah. it for today. Stick around for next week, guys. There's going to be more yeah. news coming. Oh, let's hope so. Every week. Please no more mattresses or wheelchairs. Thank you. See you guys <laughs> later. <laughs>